Hello and welcome back to the lab. In an effort to get the 7854 up to functioning and get it so we can use it on the bench, I need to adjust the controls. This is a calibration program that is part of the scope. So what I need to do is, if I typed everything in right, we should get the calibration grid when I hit execute stored function start there we go now that is supposed to line up with the graticule on the scope that's off by about 0.2 divisions it's supposed to be within 0 0.05 so Obviously, we need some. We have some adjustments we need to make. So I'll get a tuning tool. Sorry about the wobbly camera. The adjustments are these pots right at the top of the display board. This is the A29 board, the one that's closest to the frame. And then there are the adjustments I'm going to be making. First one is uh, R1205, which is right here I'd say that's infinitely better okay so it wants R65 on the vertical amp board A18 to um, you move that down to bisect. So this is actually overexpanded. No, it's not overexpanded. It's lined up pretty good. It's off here. It's on in the center. It's off here. It's off on the bottom, and it's off on the top. So the whole thing needs to shift down, and then it needs to expand this way just a little bit to get back in. There we go. So now I need to find the vertical amp board. I'm not doing a full calibration on this. I'm just trying to fix this alignment routine because I'm not sure how this, I don't know if it drifted out of spec. It's not too far gone, like somebody screwdrivered it, but it's not quite there either. And I really wouldn't mess with it until I was ready to do a full cal on this unit, but um, it was having it was causing me some capture problems. I take it back. It's R65 RO waveform center adjustment. It's actually right here on the vertical board, and that drifted over to the. Drifted right a little bit again. Could be the environment too. This thing traveled quite a ways before it found my bench. So. Wait a second. That was the wrong pot. Sixty five, not ninety nine. That was RO waveform gain. RO waveform center is high and to the back left of the board. Here it is, right here. There we go. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. Now we need the horizontal gain on R1300 to line up these. So R1300.
That is probably about as good as I'm going to get it, honestly. We do adjust RO waveform gain for equal distance on the board. So that's about there. All right, so we hit run on the keyboard. Okay, so now what you're seeing is where it says waveform dot pause, vector pause. So it's going between dots and vectors, dots and vectors, dots and vectors. And what you're looking for is no shifting of the display. So that's good. I don't need to mess with that adjustment, so I'm just going to leave that one alone. So let's see what a captured waveform looks like if we got rid of our dead spot. So we'll turn this off. Turning it off will destroy the program. So you know, if you have to do it again, you have to type in all of that again. Um, the source for that is in the service manual. I don't have the backup battery power connected, so that just destroyed everything. So let's capture with 10 averages. Now let's look at stored. And it did. It fixed our problem. So before, I had a really short tail at the digital portion of the uh, display, so it wasn't completely lined up, but it's gone now, so it's, it's fixing. Uh, I can simulate what um, that looked like by going back to scope, rolling this over to the extreme for here. And then we'll capture that. And then we'll look at stored. See how it's got the tail at the bottom? So that was happening about 0.4 divisions initially. So I am really happy with that. I can move this over capture it, view the stored, and let's see, both, yeah, it's just picking up right here, it's not, it's not grabbing, it's not capturing all the way at the end, but who cares, that is, amplifier is a little off, because it's not linear, let's see what it says a frequency measurement is, let's see how the measurement functionality is, is working, stored, Let's see, we'll set this as ground reference. We'll go back to DC, and then period. 145.4, we're still at 147. I'll have to see what the spec is on this guy, but that may not be too bad. Let's check the B time base, see if it gives us any other, oh. That's a problem. Capture. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Scope. Trigger. B intensity. A intensity is down. B intensity is up. Position this. Capture. Uh, stored ground, and then we'll do a frequency measurement, 150, so it's a little over, so 150.8. Have to see what the spec is on that. I think these guys are 3%, so if that's the case, I have more faith in my, uh, frequency generator for accurate frequency than I do in the 7584 just because it's not designed for, well, it's designed for as accurate a frequency measurement as you can get in this time period, but it is not a frequency counter. No, it makes sense that the time bases would be, it would be 3% because that's, that's what the accuracy of the time base is. 
going with a 3% accuracy, which is what most of the 7000 series has. Turns out the accuracy is not in the frame. The accuracy is in the time base, like I suspected. So going with a 3% accuracy, I'm allowed. I'm still feeding the 147 megahertz into the uh, front end. So I am allowed 151 megahertz to 142 megahertz to get it and be considered in spec. That's with a 3% accuracy plus and minus. So both plugins would actually be in spec and be functioning normally, which is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's capturing waveforms properly. It's functioning. It's uh, awesome. Um, I'm going to see... Uh, I've got a bunch of LEDs to burn, so I'm going to try the LED mod in this, and I'm going to see if we can't uh, do the LED mod that I've been doing on, on a bunch of the other ones and see how it goes. But uh, much happier with the acquisition now, and everything seems to be working. So that is really, really nice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about that. I still want to do a full calibration on this, but the full to do a full calibration on the frame, you're actually aligning three amplifiers and to get them to overlap with each other. So it's going to be very long. It's going to be very fiddly. The other thing is I actually need to make a circuit board to do the alignment properly because one of the steps requires pulling out all the digital cards and hooking the uh, analog section directly to the tube. So that is a very unique card from Tektronix that isn't made anymore. So let's kind of put a damper on that one. I may have to design. I may have to redesign that one and and build it. Um, there has been some talk about that, kicking that around, getting that done. So let me get the LEDs in real quick, and we'll fire it up and see if it works together. Okay, I have the Gradico lights in. Let's see if. Um, Graticule illumination is all the way down. If I turn this on and they fire up, they won't work. If they do what they're supposed to do, it'll be a happy upgrade. Let's find out. That's a good sign so far. Awesome. Okay. Well, the real answer is um, they're turning on really quickly like that. So it will work. However, that blue shift right here means the LEDs are overdriving and they're overheating. So these need a current limit resistor. So let me see what a 100, uh, um, 100 ohm current limit does. And uh, we'll put them back in. But this will work. These will probably just need a current limit. Okay, after doing a bit of testing, I have found that a 100 ohm resistor is the perfect current limit. So if I turn this on, we roll the Graticule lights up. Here we go. Full power. At full power with, with a 100 ohm resistor, they're running about 30 milliamps through them. So not as bright as the... 70, 77, the 7603s or the 7704, but still plenty serviceable. At some point, I need to fix this reflective tape to shoot the light up on the screen better. But the current limiting resistor even has enough room underneath the tube to just tuck back in. The uh, wire gets a little bent. Just push that back in there. But with the heat shrink, it doesn't short on anything, and the resistor will still have room to breathe. Everything's all set there. I'm going to get the uh, cleaner, clean off the front of the scope while it's open. And then we'll clean off the gel, the uh, Tech Blue, and we'll take some pictures. All right, let me get the screws back in. These metal tabs are kind of a pain in the butt, and I'll bring you guys right back. Let me turn the lights off, show you what this thing looks like with the lights down. And there we go. Thanks for stopping by the lab today, taking a look at finishing up the, touching up the cowl and doing the LED mod on this uh, 7854.
that actually will conclude the frame for now until I get the parts I need to finish it up. But uh, everything's good to go at this point. Um, I'm going to put this into service on the bench. It's been hiding over in the corner over here for a while, but it'll actually start getting pulled out and used and ready to rock and roll. I have to learn this keyboard. One thing that is incredibly important if you're going to do this to your own, the keyboard, if you're typing in the program and you make a mistake, this button is to clear the line. So until you hit next, it's not committed. Until you hit next step, it's not committed. So if you make a mistake, hit CL, CLL, which is clear line, and you'll be able to erase it and retype in the one line. It'll save you from having to retype the whole program in if you make a mistake. So other than that, if you're enjoying the videos, let me know. There will be more to come. We'll keep doing this. I've got some HP equipment coming. I'm going to start branching out. I'm running out of tech gear to fix. So there will be non-Tektronic stuff that starts hitting the channel here soon. So as a matter of fact, one of the packages of the HP stuff came in today. I'm super excited to show that to you guys here in the near future. I'm, I'm waiting on another one to come in from Texas. So big, huge upgrades for the lab. Really, really excited about these two pieces of equipment. So that's what we've got going here in the lab. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.